Good evening everyone. I guess some of us here are actually just back from holiday and some of us here are doing internship or are actually working. So for those who are just back from holidays, maybe you have already experienced some of the holiday games. And those who are on internship and are working actually and are planning for your upcoming holidays, I hope that this speech will be useful for you. Today I will share with you eight holiday games. There are some are quite common and maybe some of you already know and some are quite interesting that I hope that you will know by today. So for the first game is fake money. So you, you go to all overseas, people will give you different types of notes, uh, different colors, you will feel very unfamiliar with that note and you may get the fake money or when they give you the change, they will try to distract you and for example, they want to give you $100 of change, but they will distract you and give, give you only $70 or, or $80 if you don't count properly. So beware of this. So what are you going to do when you want to prevent fake money? First, you do research and bring small notes. For example, you want to buy $50 worth of goods. You just give them at maximum $100. You don't give them $1,000 notes because the chance of getting fake money and wrong change will be very high. And also, yeah. So for the second scheme, fake cops. For example, you are walking on the roads with your friends, and one guy who is dressing like a policeman come and approach you. May I? Um, I want to see your ID. I want to see your passport. I want to see some travel documents. And when you take out your wallet, what are they going to do? They going to rob the wallet and run away. So, how to prevent this kind of fake cops? First, you don't put money, all your money and ID in the wallet. They say you don't put all eggs in one basket, and you don't. You normally you have that kind of uh, sling bag that you put inside for your passport, ID, and just put some small notes in your wallet. And so, secondly, you ask for the policeman identification. Or ask the, ask him. Oh, so what's your ID, your, your police ID? And maybe you can ask him. Maybe you can ask me for my ID in the next, the nearest police station. So if he's a fake cops, he would not dare to bring you to the next, the nearest police stations, right? So that's how you prevent fake cops. And the third one, fake monks. <laughs> this is very popular in Japan. And when you go to all the temples, all the pagodas, the fake monk will approach you for some money or in exchange with some blessings. And if you think that he's very pitiful, you can give him some change, but it's not very advisable. So how to prevent this? So what will you do? Option A, pretend that you don't understand Japanese and just smile and walk away. Or you offer him food instead of money. Or you just say no on the fourth one, just run away. But if you think that he's a real mom, maybe you can offer him some food instead. Or you just pretend that you don't understand Japanese at all. That's a good advice for you. And the fourth one, fake James. This is very, very common in Thailand and Myanmar, where the gem industry is are thriving. I just came back from Myanmar. And the whole market were actually selling gems. They are telling that they are selling real rubies, sapphires, and everything. But we, with our naked eyes, we cannot really see what a fake and real one. So remember to always ask for some certification. And even certification can be fake. So, <laughs> so if you think that it's only $5, $10, you can buy for souvenirs. But if it's worth a few hundred dollars, you need to look harder and more carefully. And if you know some familiar James trader in your own country, just go straight to them and don't risk losing your money overseas. So the fifth one, fake friend. <laughs> Today is all fake. Yeah, so you're walking on the road and some some uh, try to approach you. Hi, I know you from primary school. Let's go for a coffee. And when you went into some expensive restaurant, you eat very happily. And then when it comes to paying, 
the friends will run away and you're left with the hefty bills. Or another way is that actually this one, my aunt encountered this in Vietnam. She was walking on the road and then someone come and ask, Oh, I know you from secondary school. And when she was talking like that, the person already brought away the phone and stuff. So you need to ask very carefully, do you know the teacher, the uh, class tutor of that secondary school, uh, sec 5? If the person can give you the name, at least maybe you can trust. But don't ever go out with a stranger. Like for example, go to eat, or maybe you can just exchange contract contacts for future um, conversation, but not on that day itself. Because you need to clarify whether it's a fake friend or a real friend. So the sixth six one, fake taxi. <laughs> They, they don't use the meter and they will try to go around and around and around, take the longest route as longest as possible so that they can cost you as much money as possible. And sometimes if you are a girl and you go alone on this kind of taxi, they may drive you to somewhere that you may not be able to come back. So <laughs> remember, if you see some suspicious taxi with no, um, not looking very real, you, you just politely walk away, or you note down the driver name and car plate, or you ask the hotel to call the taxi for you, and you also look for moving taxi instead of those stationary and waiting for their place. Okay. So the seven one, jet ski scan. This one is encountered in Thailand. When you take the jet ski and went out, suddenly the th they already damaged the jet ski and when you come back, it's damaged and they ask for high compensation. And if you don't pay, they will use violence. And even the police there, police there you cannot trust, you, they're already bribed by these jet ski scammers. So be careful as well. And my advice to you is don't really play jet ski in Thailand and you buy travel insurance and call police not very useful actually. And the last one, monkey business. Actually this one you can see in Indonesia, the monkey will wrap away your phone, your camera, and the owner of the monkey will come and ask for some money to back back. So be careful, you look around, you keep all your valuables in your bag and you hold your belongings tightly. And you buy bananas for them so that they will wrap the bananas instead of wrapping your camera and hats and sunglasses. So that's the end of my holiday scan. I hope it's useful for you for your upcoming holidays. Thank you very much.